Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Scout Flip and Customize, and today we are working on Freight Train again. But this time, something fun. As you know, the last episode, we went ahead and had to swap the transmission, and not so fun. Although it came out awesome. Today, we got the Banks Big Hoss Tuner and a cold air intake that we're going to throw in. We've actually had it like six months, but I've been nursing the transmission along for so long that I didn't dare put it in. Well, the time has come, it's put it in. So it's about time Freight Train gets a little attention. She's been neglected the past six months or so. Um, we got some touch-up paint to do to it. I hooked a uh, sawmill with the front bumper. It was literally, I think I posted it. It was all smashed in. We pulled it out really, really good considering with a tractor. And um, it's, a, it's a nice clean rig. We're gonna be doing a flatbed conversion, you name it. And I got show safe shirts on and it's like November. So even better. Let me show you what we got. So this is what we got. We got the Banks Big Hoss Tuner. And honestly, I gotta look it up again. I don't remember what it was. I think it was around, I think this thing weighs a ton, 100 horse or whatever. It comes with a full wiring harness. It's not just OBD2 plug and play. I don't think it'll be too bad, but I see some fuses and some connectors and yeah, maybe it will be bad. I don't know. And then the uh, Ram Air cold air intake for this thing, that's also going on. So. All right, I'm looking it up as we speak because it's been so long, literally. But this is just the big hoss tuner for this truck. Looks like 70 horsepower and 180 foot-pounds of torque. Um, that's quite a bit. And originally, this truck had a, I don't know if you guys remember these old Van Aken tuners, plug-and-play tuner. It was like 60 horse, 120 foot-pounds of torque, something like that, don't quote me. Um, and that thing worked awesome until it stopped working. It was, it woke the truck up just the right amount. We're not looking for crazy power out of this thing by any means. Just to wake up that, you know, early 24 valve Cummins engine. They're just a little numb, um, but you get them breathing good, you throw a little tuner at it, and it's a completely different truck. So I'm excited to get these parts in here. So I'll stop talking and get the parts in here. All right, <laughs> this was another recent toy. I say, but uh, now it's in the way, so we will move it, get it out of the way, so we can have a little fun with freight train. All right, so currently this truck does have the uh, Edge Insight CTS-2. Um, that is not a tuner, it's just literally a Rito. So we can monitor all our gauges, temperatures, or anything else we want to do. So that'll be staying in here in addition to the Big Hoss tuner because that doesn't have a readout or anything with it. It just, it's in, it's, it's there all the time. You don't change the settings, nothing. It's just to wake the truck up. Um, and then th this thing here is where we will monitor everything else as far as that goes. So as you can see, once it gets done loading the gauges, sometimes this year, as we wait, like I said, pretty cool, right? It does work well. All right, so the cold air intake and everything, obviously pretty self-explanatory. We'll get to that after. I think we should get into the electronics and the tuner part first. So, isn't that pretty? So what I'll probably do is I'm thinking, I don't know how long the, the runs are or anything. I'm hoping we can have it live right here next to our Oracle uh, rock lights as well. Uh, but we'll see. So we have a small part of the kit. It looks like a, a completely groomed out wiring harness that it does appear to be plug and play. And, but I don't know that it is all plug and play because there's some taps here. I'm gonna quickly do a uh, little direction read and see where we're at. And if you noticed, Caleb's doing the recording. So uh, it's not just me holding the camera today. So it's something cool, something different. And first things first, anytime you're gonna be doing anything electronic, disconnect your ground cable. Uh, this thing has two batteries, so both of them. And yeah, you're gonna lose your radio and everything else, but do yourself a favor. Same thing if you're welding on a vehicle, disconnect the ground. Uh, the batteries are loose in there. Once your battery's disconnected, there's a rubber plug way under here that supposedly you can just pull out, which it says remove, so I'm just gonna. Whoa, uh, it does come out. Almost out. So there's a. 
Okay, anyway, I'm gonna get that plug out. These screws, they hold this bad boy in. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this and finish taking that rubber plug out and I'll get right back with you. Now see how that goes. It's also not easy to cut it in place, which is what I was trying to do. So this rubber grommet that stacked, they, they make it, at least it reads like it just pulls out. It's actually held in with two uh, plastic clips. So to, what they want you to do, and I clearly missed it, I was trying to do it in place. I'm gonna drill a hole right here instead of cutting a slot and just run the wire through there. All right, got it. That was harder than it needed to be, but I got it. All right, there is an eight and a 10 pin connector on the wiring harness right here. And what we're gonna do, we put that big old slot in the middle of this. We're gonna feed these through, oh boy. I'm gonna probably put a little lube on that and then spray it and feed these through. And then you're gonna have about, so I think it's all these connectors will be inside the cab. It says about 18 inches are inside the cab. This section of the harness will be out in the engine compartment on my left, your right. Oh my, even the fuse holder, holy God. Yeah, so we're getting it. It's not easy, I'm not gonna lie. Be much left this grommet by the time I get it done. Uh, whew. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, you were never doing this in place. No way. Well, that was harder than it needed to be, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this end into the cab, put our grommet back in, and then it's essentially mostly weathered. I gotta find the hole. Ooh, baby, find the hole. Don't mind a little bit of blood on my hand. That's just part of doing battle. Ish. Ow. And we're working outside today because, well, it's November and it's like 65 degrees out in Maine. So that's a rare sight and a feeling. So we're gonna go with it. So I wish I saw. Yeah, I wish I saw this earlier. And uh, for automatic transmission vehicles, they give you this additional harness, four-pin connector that we're also going to have to drive through that same grommet. Now that I put it back in the truck, so this is going to get even funner. You don't have to have any more of me struggling. I just flipped the page, and they have a little note about pulling the wires through the grommet, and it says uh, taping the end of the harness to a stiff piece of wire or coat hanger may make routing the harness through the firewall a simpler task. That is not the case. Next, you're gonna locate the canvas connector. Shaped like this, goes like this. Um, on this truck, it's down here, way down by the power steering pump. I don't know if you can see my hand right here, but there's just a dummy plug in this one. So what I'm gonna do is take that dummy plug out and I think pull it apart. So here's the dummy plug. Literally just a blank plug. That's a yellow and a green wire that this one here is gonna made up to. This comes from our tuner. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm not gonna just route this haphazardly. I'm gonna try to actually make a decent job out of routing it over to it. So give me a second, we'll route it over. And this, this must be the connector because well, the wire colors are even the same. So kudos to Banks for that, but they didn't there was no picture of this connector. They didn't even give good detailed directions on to where it is. So just so you know, it's down here by the power steering pump, driver's side, down low. Uh, we routed the wires out of the way. So uh, I'll clean that up with some zip ties. But before we do that, we'll figure out where the rest of these connectors are gonna go. All right, map sensor wiring is next. It's, on, it's down in the back here on the engine uh, intake. And I think it's this one. It's a little three wire connector. And on our harness, which are here, this just goes in line with it. So you'll plug your this into the harness and then this back into the sensor. So it basically just taps into that communication link on your map sensor. So same thing, I'm gonna groom this down and under and plug this in. Right here behind this uh, gray plug or underneath it, that's the map sensor connector right there where my tip of my finger is, behind your fuel filter assembly. 
we are plugged into those two connectors. Again, I'm going to zip tie and groom this out, uh, out of the way, but I still got a couple connectors. It looks like we have two more connections that we're going to have to make. So let's figure out where they was going to go. They look like wire taps. I'm not actually installing the intake right now. However, we need to get automatic transmission. We need to get to the three connector to the, uh, essentially the computer, for the, um, automatic transmission so we're just going to take this factory airbox out of here right now now that that's out of the way your uh, pcm for your transmission is right here and the connector to what we want to go for is this white one the center one and i think uh, the directions actually tell you to pull them all out but i think we can get away with just this one and what we're looking for we're going to be tapping into i'm going to pull some of this wire back some of the tape off of this so i can actually separate there we go don't need this there we're looking for an orange wire with a black tracer and it should be pin number 11 and it looks like it's that could be red or orange i don't know all right so pin number 11 it's a solid orange wire with a black tracer we're going to actually put a wire tap into this wire right here not a super fan of putting wire taps in um but banks does know what they're doing and makes good stuff so we'll trust them since we're going to be putting a wire tap on, I'm going to go ahead and put some dielectric grease on there to uh, help it out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on a few inches away from the connector. Again, we're going to be putting it on the um, the tracer, the orange wire with the black tracer. So once I struggle this, get this thing on, we will uh, get right back to you. All right, the wire tap's in, so we can go ahead and plug our white connector back in. And then what we're gonna do is there's a, just like that, there is a gray wire in a harness, a longer, there's a short one and then a long, well, the short one's blue actually. This long gray one, we're gonna route along the top here, along the firewall, we'll kind of tuck it in and hide it in here. And it's gonna plug right into that tap we just put in down there at the uh, transmission controller. All right, so I'm gonna put a little more dielectric grease on the connector that we can now plug into our wire tap down here on the uh, orange and black wire orange wire with a black tracer all right in your main harness running back on the driver's side there is a solid red wire that we're going to install another um t-tap on so right here we have our solid red wire oh look we have two that's just great hmm no i think that's orange Pink? No, nope, that's got a tracer in it, so that's not it. The bigger one has a tracer. Oh, wow, that's good. Oh, look at all the pretty wires. Look at the pretty wires. All right, they all have tracers. That one's a big one with a tracer. The solid red wire with no tracer is right there. So we're going to put another tap into that. Then our last connector in the engine compartment, anyway, is going to plug in right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that last tap on. All right, this thing's a beast. This is heavy. Um, so... This is gonna, I actually thought it would be under the hood. This actually installs up underneath the dash. You're never gonna see anything to do with any of this. So we're gonna find a place to locate this under the dash. Uh, hopefully they thought of it. Maybe it's gonna go in that kick panel we removed. It does come with Velcro and sticky tape. The eight and 10 pin connectors are gonna plug into that as well as the transmission harness is gonna plug into that. Then we're gonna take, I think it said the other end of the transmission harness. Yeah, there's a 10 gauge, no, 98 to 2001 automatic transmission. There's a 10 gauge dark blue wire on the wiring harness running along the right side of the steering column. So 10 gauge is a decent sized wire. We're going to install a yellow T-tap into that and plug the red wire from the harness into here. So this is going on a blue wire on the steering column. Let me find it. Found a solid blue wire right here, but that's not 10 gauge. So stand by. I'm still digging here. All right, guys, I found it. So here's the dark blue 10 gauge that we're gonna put the yellow tap on. Once we put the yellow tap on, we're gonna run our red wire from our harness. I don't remember where that went to, but it's here someplace on up into that tap. So we gotta tap into the blue 10 gauge wire right now. All right, our blue wire that our tap is on, the red wire is now connected to it, and our other connectors, I think there's just these three, four connectors. <laughs> are gonna go into the Big Hoss tuner, which I'm assuming I'm gonna just stick onto the back of this, I think. All right, guys, we still have to plug in the Big Hoss tuner and mount that, and that's fine, but now it tells us to go on to check our turbocharger. It says, there's an ID tag on the front of the turbo, which is down here, and if you have a HY35W, 
it just says skip to checking engine performance um, page 11 complete steps 19 however if your turbo is not an HY35W, which ours is not, ours is an HX35W, continue to step 16. So that would be us. So this may not apply to everybody. So because ours is not the one that they reference, so we have to do the what they call the boost modifier. So down here, there's a brass fitting coming off the turbo right here that gives you a reference. We're going to take that clamp off. It looks like a permanent clamp, so we'll have to cut that clamp off. We're gonna take this brass fitting out and we're gonna take the, the one they give you in the kit, which is right here, and it probably has, yeah, it has an orifice in it um, to actually drive the boost up, fooling the truck and allow you to get more boost out of it, I believe. So we're gonna take this fitting out, we're gonna put this fitting in and put a new clamp on there and we'll be good to go. Oh yeah, don't break. Now we're taking out this brass fitting, which is pretty corroded but it's coming out and we'll put in the other one. I'm going to show you the difference when I take it out. So you can't really see in there, but there's a pretty good size hole. Actually go over here in the light. There's a good size hole in here that it lets boost through. <gasps> Hear that? This one is a tiny hole. <gasps> It's a lot harder to blow air, boost through there. It allows, it's fooling the truck to allow it to build more boost. How'd you like that? All right, got a little bit of plumber's putty, dope, plumber's dope tape, whatever you want to use. Um, now we're going to screw, screw this fitting in, our little boost fooler, so to speak. And um, I think we're going to get it to screw in. All right, so the hose clamp that was on there was a permanent hose clamp. I don't have any of those and you can't reuse it. So we have another one that's ruggeder um, than a standard hose clamp. So I'm just trimming the hose back, oh, probably like a quarter inch or so with the wrong tool to do it. That's fine because I can. It's my truck. And then um, we're going to slide it on and tighten it down and hopefully uh, it holds. All right. We now have our boost modifier and or fooler in here and a new clamp on, so we're good to go. It looks like we're going back to uh, step 19, which sounds like it's just fire this thing up. All right, we're plugging in our tuner right now. Then we're going to do a startup and make sure everything is good to go before we go ahead and groom anything out. Um, there's two pin, nope, that's a four pin connector. Well, it goes way over here. Interesting. They didn't give you a whole lot of room on that one, did they? Um, it's not that. I don't know what that is. All right, I guess I got to figure out what that is. And then uh, there's another connection here. That one is not that either. That goes over here. So that one is this one. I don't know if we even need this one. It might be for the manual. Let me go back and double check. All right, they gave us this, and I don't even know. I feel like this goes into the CAN bus connector if you had a different setup, possibly. Like this would this would plug into the different CAN bus connector. Yeah, it was a flat connector. Then it would adapt to there. So we don't need that. There's also a couple jumpers here that I'm assuming if you had a manual transmission, you would jumper these out. So the only one I'm not sure about is this connector. It doesn't seem to go to anything, and they don't even talk about it. There's no place on the box for it. There's a two pin connector there. The four pin connector went here, so I don't know. They don't talk about a jumper. Now, remember we already took our air box out because it was in our way for the wiring of the tuner. But now that we have that out of the way, I put the edge seal on the, the base box that just breathes through the fender of the truck for that ram air. Um, that's gonna get bolted into place, but before we do that, I gotta go ahead and take this piece out. This is a factory piece it doesn't need to be there so that's gone and then it's going to sit right on these three studs and then connect with the nuts all right so i just got off the phone with uh gail banks just kidding with uh tech support from banks and not referencing the directions at all but i'm glad you're watching this video because well you don't use this wire unless you have an additional kit that has like the boost gauge and all this other stuff that would then plug right into this and he said that it would reference it in those directions 
However, they should have referenced it in these directions because you, nobody even knows what to do with it. All right, so we're installing the actual air box itself now, and as you can see, it feeds right into the fender for the uh, cold air side of the house. So that's pretty cool. All right, so next thing is the intake tube itself off the turbo. You're gonna put the rubber grommet on there, a couple hose clamps. Look at the size of that beast. That can move some air. Compared to that restricted stock one, this thing's gonna crank. Oh yeah, race car, basically race car. That fit nice. Now he's gonna tighten up our clamps. I will say this about the quality products versus something buying cheap on Amazon or eBay. When you spend the money on stuff like the banks and their stuff is good. Aside from the directions, I think they were lacking there. But that's why you watch videos like this to take you through it. All right, we got our bad boy banks filter. That is big. Um, that's gonna go on the end of this. So we actually had to leave one hose clamp loose in order to get this on, the ones that I just put on the uh, compressor wheel. So we're gonna slide this into place. Then we're gonna tighten everything down. All right, got Caleb in here working now. Now I'm holding the camera. So he's putting the, the top cover on. Two shorter screws go to the front and a longer screw in the rear. Once he gets those all tightened down, I think we're ready to start it. Now I still have to groom the wires out, but at least we'll be able to connect the batteries and get this thing started and make sure, well, it's good to run. And let's not forget, they sent us some pretty cool Banks um, decals, which I don't know what I'm gonna do with, but they're cool. Oh, look at you. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how we did before I bought anything up. started all right guys so truck runs now we're going to be mounting this thing and oh if your diagnostic code if you can read morse code no i'm just kidding there's red and green light right here and if they're flashing like they should be just steady light green see that it would be flashing red in a series of flashes and it'll tell you there's something wrong with it um or it's not communicating right or whatever um ours seems to be working right so i'm going to go ahead and get it mounted up where it's going to go is right here on this strip right here so this is just going to get stuck like so onto that all right guys i'm just putting the screws back in the panel so that big hoss tuner is mounted to the panel itself with sticky tape and it's six and a half inches from the left side of the panel there's like a solid strip across here a plastic piece that's where it sticks onto So um, you want to check your exhaust, gas temperatures, and everything else. You should be taking it easy for the first 20 or 30 minutes, it said, for whatever reason. Uh, probably not going to do that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you don't, obviously you don't want to get, and it would never over 1,300 degrees on your, um, your exhaust temperature because, well, that would be a problem. So let's pull out of here and just give it some water acceleration to see if we notice anything different with um, throttle response. So the boost definitely built up a lot faster, but I feel like that was just the boost uh, cooler itself that we installed. I didn't feel a big difference, so I want to make sure I'm not reading any codes off the tuner itself. So I'm going to drop this panel down at least so we can see and uh, make sure we're not reading any codes. All right, so we're getting a code. It's two red flashes separated by a green and then three red flashes. So right here, two, three, open EGT thermal couple. Chep check EGT thermal couple connection yeah okay all right it's dark out now uh, we had a slight problem but I'll get into that in a second but getting back to the tuner you know how on the tuner in the direction it never addressed this jumper wire it never talked about this connector the two pin jumper wire right there I called banks this is where it gets good I called banks got somebody on the phone all right, I don't know where I was because my battery died in my GoPro. Uh, but I called Banks, I talked to somebody, and he said, you do not need to use that jumper wire, that uh, connector with the one single jumper wire in it. 
only use that if you want to bypass the Boss Haas tuner if you don't want to use it because the directions never talked about it. Now, once I got back and then the truck wouldn't start at all uh, and a lot of troubleshooting later, it looks like I have a bad crank position sensor, which is behind the starter. Troubleshoot it down to that point, didn't catch it on video. I tapped it with the handle of a uh, wrench because you can't get at it without taking the starter off. Boom, truck fired right up. But anyway, this isn't about that, so I will replace that. I called Banks back again. I got somebody else. This time, I was talking about that connector. I said, I didn't see any difference. We went ahead and we, uh, we ran it down the street with the tuner like we were expecting to get upgrades, and I didn't see any difference. Well, he's like, you have to install that jumper wire, otherwise it'll throw this code and it won't do anything. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So we plugged it in, we just took it for a ride. Big difference, night and day. I can't really show you now because it's dark out. However, when it's layered again, we'll take it for another drive. But that's very important to note, the fact that directions weren't that great. I will hit banks up for that. All right, third battery later is just in a nutshell, if your directions seem off and you call somebody and something still doesn't seem right, sometimes you have to call them back and get someone else because we put it in, it made a big difference. Is that right that we had to call twice and get that? Uh, personally, it's not, especially for a company like Banks. I'm not shitting on them, but it was just a little frustrating in that fact, but I'm glad we figured it out. Wife just walked through the camera. Um, we do have to do a crank position sensor regardless. So let's get some daylight in here. We'll take this thing for a ride. All right, it's the next day now working on freight train. And as you can see, what I'm holding here is a crank sensor. So that was completely unplanned. And what happened was when we came back from our test drive, well, we didn't really notice a difference. Shut the truck off, let it sit, went to start it, nothing. Had to troubleshoot the heck out of it. And lo and behold, I lost the crank sensor. Um, actually not super uncommon. It was just a crank, crank, crank and no start. Almost like it wasn't getting fuel, but it wasn't counting the cycles because the crank sensor died. Now to get to that, <laughs> we got to put the truck back up on the lift disconnect the batteries and take the starter out to get to that. So I'm gonna throw that in there. And so that was fun. <laughs> they uh, don't make that crank sensor easy to get to concerning you gotta take the starter out. Oh, and then the dipstick tubes in the way. Way to go, Dodge. As long as it starts, we're good for another test drive. All right, the crank sensor's in. We're gonna go ahead and take this thing for a ride now since it starts and runs and the tuner's hooked up. So let's take it for a ride. So, right away, I noticed it's definitely got more pickup than it did. Um, it seems to pull a lot harder. It's definitely building boost a lot quicker. You notice the difference? Yeah, a little bit. So, honestly, I think this is going to be the perfect, like, match, so to speak, for what I want. Just towing and hauling and everyday use. So, a combination with the intake and this tuner. I think it's good. All right, so you know we weren't gonna finish the video without some type of burnout. This truck in its stock form would not even do a burnout or a power break or anything like that without the tuner and the intake installed. So it did make an improvement so that is something and i think for everyday use it's a good combination that's the bank's big hoss tuner as well as the cold air intake um again thanks a lot for watching keep in mind directions are not always right i hope this helped you take care scott flip customized because i don't give a